attitude to uh, make the arguments that they feel are appropriate, and you saw Mr. Perry give a fine one on her behalf. Uh, you are, her, his argument is it is reasonable to think that she thought there was a weapon in that coat. And yours is the opposite, that it was unreasonable action that she took. Well, I mean, to me, the issue is not just whether there was a weapon there. And I think I mentioned this in argument. It's not the fact that she just thought he had a weapon. She has to think that the force was necessary to defend against death or serious bodily injury. Now, obviously, police can't uh, just summarily execute everyone that either doesn't show their hands or has a weapon. That, that, that's not the law. The law is it has to be necessary to, to essentially save a life. And what do you think you showed at, in this whole thing as far as you laid out, like, the facts? In the, law, the final question of, of her was you laid out the facts, which is? The circumstances didn't show that he was a threat to cause death or serious bodily injury at the time that she shot him. Now, you also mentioned during closing arguments that this is not a time to be compassionate. How much do you think that emotions is going to weigh into this, um, being that she was very emotional when she took this stand? She is a mother. She's married. Well, it, it, it's a concern. Um, you know, you hope that uh, a jury is going to look at it and make a decision based solely on the evidence, but, you know, we understand jurors are human and there's a lot of human elements involved here. She's a mom, she's a, she's a police officer, uh, and nobody believes that she got in her car at the start of her shift on that day with the intent to go out and kill somebody. So, uh, you know, it's a, a tragedy on both sides, and it is emotional, but that's going to be up to the jury to, to be able to set that emotion aside and, and do that cold detached analysis of just the evidence. That, that, that's our hope. And coming to the end of this trial, she's charged with, I mean, what, three three charges? You got murder, right. involuntary manslaughter, involuntary. Um, and, and that still stands with you. I mean, after, I mean, the end of the trial, um, you think, I mean, there's still, they hold. Yeah, if you're asking me, does the evidence support the charges we brought up? Absolutely. Charges, yeah. okay. absolutely. She uh, says these charges are political. Yeah, I mean, t to be quite honest with you, that, uh, that, that comment was disgusting and reprehensible. Let's talk about, we already talked about third degree murder, that's a 20 to 40, I, I, we always like to know sentencing, I know it's, but if she were to, can you go over, if she were to be charged with involuntary manslaughter, what kind of prison time she could be looking at? Involuntary manslaughter is a misdemeanor, it carries a statutory maximum of five years, so by law the most she could get would be two and a half to five years. Her sentencing guidelines for someone with zero prior record uh, would in reality be quite less than that. Could she serve no time if she gets involuntary? That would be up to the judge. Uh, the sentencing guidelines are advisory, uh, so, but if a judge is going to deviate from them, there has to be a reason. Uh, ultimately, though, uh, the bottom line with, with sentencing is it's up to the court. And voluntary, what would the sentencing be there? That is a felony of the first degree. It carries a statutory maximum of 20 years, so the maximum sentence she could get would be 10 to 20 years. Uh, but again, sentencing guidelines would dictate uh, a lesser sentence than that with someone with no record. Any thoughts about why they wanted to see the video again? Because they can. Um, and in addition to that, it's you know, obviously the most critical piece of evidence in the case. It just seems natural that they would want to give it another look. And you know, I think it's probably a good thing that now that they had a chance to hear the arguments, digest all the evidence, give it another look. And Brian Perry kept on saying, if he complied, he would be alive. And your response to that is? Well, I mean, it's victim blaming. And, you know, no one is suggesting that what he did was right. No one suggests that it's a good thing to, to run from police. Uh, but there are punishments designated for those types of acts. And uh, death is not one of them.